So cultured. Super cultured. Okay. Yeah. It's a thing. Cultured like a yogurt. Cultured like a yogurt. <laughs> Can that be the episode title? Maybe. Cultured like a yogurt. Oh my god. It's like my brain went, what? <laughs> and I'm the one who drank more coffee. And there's a bag of sugar and a bag of I don't understand. Oh my goodness. I said that specifically for that effect. Good. The effect was well received. <laughs> Holy Hannah. Okay. And on that note, <laughs> welcome to the Northern News Podcast. We are uh, two girlfriends in fiber, uh, enjoying and sharing our love of Sid Fiber and Crafts, coming to you from Winnipeg, Manitoba. Primarily, we're about knitting, but if we're honest, we cover a lot of other stuff. <laughs> Great deal of other things. Great deal of other things. Uh, we are coming to you a little early this week, which is totally okay. As uh, we spend our Sunday afternoons currently learning Regency era dancing. Otherwise known as English country dancing. Absolutely. So we decided why not? We'll uh, make it a day. And now that we've done our uh, daily catasthetic program, Mm -hmm. there's a lot of moving for the holding hands and twirling business that we do. It's a great deal of walking in circles. Absolutely. It was a beautiful fall day, though. It was a gorgeous walk up to the church and a gorgeous walk over from the church. Mm -hmm. Got to stop at a bakery yep forget which one we were at roll cake they have really tasty scones and really good real iced tea like tea that has been iced it was really good it was a really good iced tea and good bubble tea too mm-hmm. super excited so diana my dear since i'm jocelyn and anybody who's listened to us before knows my voice <laughs> if you're new welcome if you're returning hey glad you guys can make it Theoretically, Diana will tell you what we're doing today if I ever be quiet. Uh, Today we're covering What's in Our Cup, Cool Threads, Wooly Workings, Yarn on the Go, Fiber Flubs, uh, Spinning Yarns, Events, and a Review. Can we talk about how fancy these cups are? Yes. And how I I don't have sugar in my tea? Oh, sorry. (laughs) But I'm not sweet enough yet. I need more. (laughs) I will get up and get some. Uh, I think I might have to get it. It's in the dark hole of a cupboard. (gasps) No! I finished the stuff that was in the sugar bowl. How could you? I'm sorry, I'll make you another sugar bowl. (sighs) How am I supposed to try to give myself a sugar buzz if there's no sugar? I'm sorry. (laughs) It's the one holdout from when I was a kid and had tea with milk and sugar. I've gotten rid of the milk, but I can't quite give up the last of the sugar. (laughs) And let's be honest, when you start drinking tea with your grandmother and your great-grandmother and you're seven, there's a lot more milk and sugar than tea going on in that cup. Yeah. 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 Yeah, Yeah, I'm straight on the tea now. I just haven't quite given up on the sugar. Okay. We'll go get some sugar in a moment. Eh, It's fine. We're drinking into some heck of fancy cups. Yeah, I I pulled out my grandmother's china teacups from the top shelf. They're so pretty! Because we've been so cultured and fancy all day that I felt like we needed some fancy teacups. I'm feeling very British. Pip pip, cheerio, tea and crumpets. My background is only three quarters European, so it's an interesting mix. It's a thing! Oh, did we actually say what we were drinking? No! I think we did. We're both drinking the same type of tea because we have tiny cups and we'll have to refill it as we go through. Yes, I just made a pot since we have tiny cups. Mm-hmm. Uh, Ayurvedic, I just learned how to say that word today. <laughs> Ayurvedic chai uh, and a little bit of respect your elders. It is a blend of teas that I It's I'd a make really myself. nice blend. Like It turned out quite lovely. And those are from the Amsterdam Tea Room. Ah. Oh. I should check to see how they're doing on the renovations and see if they're closing in on reopening. Yeah. Because the week they reopen, we're going. <laughs> More well, we tea. Have, well, we have to check out their new digs. Because their goal is to be a licensed tea room. Oh, yeah, I forgot. Yeah, like, we have to go check out their digs when they're open. Yes. I'm super excited. Like, those, they've done such a great job. Mm-hmm. And we have to, we have to go for the grand opening. Absolutely. I think this is a thing 100%. that we need to do. 100%. Whether or not I'm capable of getting home afterwards, we will see how well we do with the licensing part of that argument. <laughs> Jocelyn might be sleeping on the couch. Okay. It might be really late, and I might just fall face first on the couch, and then that's it. You can't convince me to get up again. <laughs> All right. That's fine. <laughs> I'm old. I like to go to bed at 10 o'clock. <laughs> Pshaw. Well, 
in an effort to uh, continue our enjoyment of the wonderful fall weather. If people can't tell, I'm excited. Summer's over. Summer's over! I'm so happy! You're so happy you're squeaking. <laughs> Summer is gone! Goodbye! I love my garden. I love growing things. I love the sun. I hate the heat. I hate the humidity. I hate the volumes of people on the sidewalks because people are always walking into me. Mm -hmm. And I hate buses without air conditioning. I hate buses without air conditioning. Yes. In 32 plus degrees Celsius heat, it's yeah. just a hot mess. Literally. Yeah. So, for me, summer summer's the worst part. But it's over. It's done. We've moved into fall. Now we're into my favorite times of year. Fall and winter. Layers. Oh, because you can wear your knits. If you're like me, you can wear your knee-high boots. Always gotta have knee-high boots. I got like 50 billion coats. <laughs> gotta pull them out and put them on display. And you don't look weird walking around holding the hot beverage in your hand. And there's just something about puttering around and shopping with girlfriends or going for coffee things that's just far more a fall thing and a winter thing than a summer thing. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm super excited about that. Also, because Halloween happens in October, and I happen to be a massive Halloween fan. Mm-hmm. I bought a $20 box worth of chocolates from Purdy's Chocolatiers in San Vitale because the box was Halloween-themed. Sucker! Right over here. <laughs> <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. Don't care. I'm going to reuse the box next year. I'm going to put more chocolate in it. <laughs> <laughs> You don't have to justify your Halloween chocolate purchases to me. Uh, I don't have to justify it to my mother because she had to buy one box for her granddaughter. Because <laughs> <laughs> I said, well, sure, but you can explain to your granddaughter why I got one and she didn't. And my mom just sighed and took another one off the shelf. <laughs> and my sister went, how come I don't have one? And my mom went, you got married. <laughs> we had a whole party for you. <laughs> sure, I said that was fair. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Seems fair. Mm -hmm. I suspect her husband will go buy her a box this week. <laughs> <laughs> However, in the Department of Cool Threads, what have you been wearing this week? I have been wearing, as always, my Lindsay slouch. Mm -hmm. uh, a little bit of my rainbow side shawl. Uh, lots of the alpaca cowl. Ooh. Do we have any fancy photos of those in Ravelry? Not fancy ones. There's lots of fancy photos of the rainbow side. Okay. Um, some not terribly good ones of the Lindsay slouch and alpaca cowl. There's photos. They're not especially awe-inspiring. That's okay. I haven't really taken any good photos of the Find Your Fade shawl, and that's what I've been wearing this week. So the Find Your Fade has gone to all the pre-wedding prep, to the wedding, and all the shopping and stuff that happens after the wedding. And then it went to Regency Era Dancing today. So my Find Your Fade has been everywhere. <laughs> everywhere! I would bust out into an I've Been Everywhere song, but nobody needs to hear me sing. It's just a really bad idea. Excuse me. It's a thing. But so far, that's all I've been wearing, because a lot of my other knits are quite heavy winter wear knits, so we're not mm -hmm. quite there yet. Though, if I make that coat that Red put up on that uh, chat... Oh, yes, which, that one. Uh, that's happening for next fall. What was that? Something about Moscow. It's Moscow Nights? Moscow something. Something? Something about Russia. Moscow coat. That wasn't quite it. No. We'll link to it in the show notes. You know what? Let's do that, because that is a freaking gorgeous coat, and I have the pattern for it, and I'm going to probably make it uh, into the spring so that I can wear it next fall, because it has an impressive, wide, beautiful, like, deco-designed collar. Oh, yes. That was yeah. the one that had, uh, it was a removable collar? Yeah. Well, I'm definitely doing the collar part, because that just makes the coat... And then they had uh, side buttons and a waist detailing, mm -hmm. and it's got that nice like knee length. Yes. Yeah, like that is such a Jawson coat. It's not oh, even. That's funny. such a Diana coat. Absolutely. Well, you have to make your own. I know. <laughs> but I figure if I buy the yarn for it in the spring, then I can spend sort of like the tail half of spring and summer. I can putter away with it. Yeah. Because then I can make the body in the spring while still kind of cool, and it's okay to have knitting in your lap. But in the summer, when you don't want knitting in your lap, I can work on the sleeves and stuff. Yeah, so, and then all I have to do is find buttons. Oh, guys, the hunt for buttons. <gasps> uh, buttons! And I'm so picky. <laughs> to the internet! <sighs> Probably. But that's it from, that's it, no, we've already gotten off topic. <laughs> uh-huh. We were talking cool threads, how did we end up talking about a coat? I don't know. Oh, uh, you're gonna hear clinking noises, background noise, brought to you by Grandma's China's 
cups. Grandma Kozak's china cups. Grandma's china cups. Causing Jocelyn to feel like her fingers are very large since 20 minutes ago. Yeah, they're, uh... Oh, wait, there, I actually got my finger in it. Yeah, well, you're dainty and girly-like. I feel like a man. Woolly workings. Woolly workings. Woolly workings. I have two things. I have four. One is sort of three things. I have a different thing. I have a totally new thing. You have a new thing? I have a totally new thing. Well, let's start with the new thing, because mine are the four usual suspects right now. So, I previously had this uh, scarf in a state of partial doneness. <laughs> Scraping saucer! Sorry, I'm done. <laughs> scarf in a state of partial doneness that I was unlikely to ever finish, despite how nicely the yarn colors were all lining up. Mm -hmm. The color pooling was lining up so that it was all nicely in diagonals, but I just... I don't know. It wasn't, it wasn't speaking to me, so it's been languishing for months. So I finally mm -hmm. frogged it the other night. Hey! While I was uh, playing Overwatch. <laughs> Nothing says intense video game like frogging your knitting. <laughs> well, because you have to wait for a match, and that can take, like, a uh, whole minute. Oh no, a whole I, minute. Yeah, so I needed something that I could just, like, pick up and drop uh, for and 30 frogging, seconds yeah, at a time. Frogging a prog... Pro little, little? Frogging a project is... Perfect for that, yeah. No, I agree. So, uh, I frogged it. Okay. And then yesterday, mm -hmm. I attempted to start the Bloomsbury bits. Oh, right. From that magazine that we reviewed mm -hmm. a few times back. A few times back? A few times back. I don't remember what magazine it was. It was the last one we reviewed. Whatever the last magazine was. I'll link to that one. Okay. Anyway, I really like the Bloomsbury mitts, and I'm like, oh, I have the yarn for that. It's currently occupied in another project. But you didn't S like it, so... So that project went away, and it's now into the Bloomsbury mitts. Uh, and I will continue talking about that project in Fiber Flubs. Oh, wow. Well, yeah. so long as that project's getting all over the place, that's all that matters. It's, um, it's doing something. <laughs> well, for everyone who tunes in on a regular basis... I did not forget about the 365-day Granny Square project. I simply wasn't well enough last week to do that much knitting and crochet work. So this week I did some catch-up, but it's caught up. So I am doing every day for 2017, I do a Granny Square a day. It's teaching me to crochet, which has been perfect. I'm doing another Red Heart yarn of the soft variety, because squishy is a thing. It has some wonderful stitch definition, so it's certainly helping me teach. And it's nice and big, which makes it a lot easier to see what you're doing. Mm -hmm. So I have been enjoying that. I got all cut up, which means two squares every day up to today. I'm not quite finished today's square. I fell asleep this morning while I was making it in bed, and my mom took away my crocheting. I share a bed with my mom while they're in town. <laughs> right. We make dad sleep on the couch. <laughs> <laughs> so that has been going. Uh, I have been continuing work on my Zadie sweater. It's actually what I'm working on right now. If you can hear clanking needles every once in a while, that's me. Uh, I'm still puttering away with the body, and we creep ever closer to uh, something fancier and new. But it's my travel. So it's really when I'm sitting waiting for the bus, or I've gone somewhere with my yarn, and I know I'm going to have some downtime. That's when it uh, travels with me. Otherwise, I don't really work on it. So I don't actually dedicate quite that much time to it. However, I'm doing it out of the Cloudborn Fibers from Craftsy. Uh, the pattern is from Craftsy as well. Uh, we've mentioned it a bazillion times. It is linked in the show notes. Uh, it's on Ravelry. You guys can certainly check it out there. It's a wonderful boxy sweater with a little cable detailing at the shoulders. So I look forward to completing it when it's done. I'm enjoying garment creation. I'm not, so good. I'm not perhaps as gung-ho about it as other people, but I've got some other stuff on the go, so... I do like my multiple projects. Doesn't I've got, uh, well... Most people? Some people are one project at a time. I'm For not. now. I'm not, so I don't quite understand, but that's fine. I definitely was for a while. Some people and also write with the right things. hand, so I don't understand that either. Yeah, uh, those people are crazy. Crazy people mm -hmm. writing with their right hands. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm left-handed, but I write with my right hand. I'm left-handed all the way. I could write with my right hand, but it's about kindergarten level. My print letters are really big and kind of messy. I have to think really hard. <laughs> but I can do it if I have to. 
I am left-handed, but I broke my arm in kindergarten when we were learning how to write. <gasps> oh, so I just learned right-handed. right-handed. Yeah, so. that happens. But that's it. Uh, well, I have two more things. you have one more thing? I have one more thing. Well, what else have you been working on? I've been continuing work on the Wonder Woman shawl. Woohoo! I have finished all the short row stripy sections in the middle. Nice. And I am on to the second W. Holy Hannah. Yeah. You're miles ahead of me. I'm on the first W. I'm like halfway down this shawl. Ugh. I'm, I'm like actually on schedule for finishing this shawl. I have to pick up the pace. It's a, a knitting intense week this week and sewing intense week this week for me. Uh, I am too also working on the Wonder Woman shawl by Carissa Browning. Uh, we're doing it at the same yarn. An Elgria in Carmine and a Fino in Filigree, both from Manos to Uruguay, mm-hmm. which is very quickly becoming one of our favorite sort of uh, yarn companies. Mm-hmm. I'm really loving the Algria. Allegria? <laughs> Al- Allegria? Allegria. Yeah, I just like saying Algria. <laughs> so I'm, I'm, this is be my third project working with Manostar Uruguay yarns, and I am continually just impressed with with the quality of yarn and the color, and I love that they're fair trade, so I'm super all about that right now. Probably However, for the clinking teacup. It's right next to the speaker. <laughs> oh, well, you know, that's how we uh, increase our lady skills. We practice, right? Mm-hmm. The other thing I've been working on is the Speckle and Pop Steve and Wes Mystery Knit Along. Am I going to get to see this before it's done, or is it just going to remain remain a mystery? It might remain a mystery for no. It'll I'll show everybody on Knit Club. Okay. Yeah, because I'll probably be working on the new clue on Friday, so I'd imagine everyone will see me working on it, unless it's like a super intense clue where I have to tune everybody out. I'll still show it off, but okay. I'll work on something else. But yeah, no, we've got uh, Knit Club on Friday, so you'll see it then. Excellent. See? Ta-da! I'm really looking forward to this. Clue three went live on Friday, which was my sister's wedding. Uh, didn't start <laughs> on Friday because I was at my sister's wedding. Seems like a good reason. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've added extra colors. Oh, yes. You added uh, some extra mini skeins. I added some extra mini skeins for extra color variation because why not? Yeah. And after that, I've completed my clues up till clue three, which just went live. Whether or not I have it done by Friday, we will see. If not, I guess I know what I'm working on next weekend so that I'm on track. But I don't have any photos posted outside of the skeins that I chose originally, so if you wish to see those, you can. But there are no spoiler photos, nor will there be spoiler photos, till after the knit-along is done. I love being spoiled, so I am certainly checking on, like, everybody's progress. But I don't like posting spoiler photos, so I don't. It's weird, sense. but I go into spoiler threads expecting to see what's going on, so it's a thing. That works. But that's all I've been working on this week. That's all I've been working on. Whew, my goodness. Well, why don't we move on? Moving on. Yarn on the go. That was me. You bought yarn. I had yarn show up for me from another province, and then I bought more yarn. Oh my goodness, and you I just got my, all the yarn. And I took my yarn to the hotel with me. Wow, your yarn just went everywhere. <laughs> My yarn has done some serious traveling this week. We have some laundry occurring in the background. Ah, laundry occurring in the background. Okay. Yeah. Thank um, you. <laughs> <laughs> the first thing we did is I got home after recording last week, and my yarn from Saskatchewan had arrived. Uh, it came from Saskatoon. It was from Midnight Cravings. Uh, if you've checked out our Instagram feed, which is Northern Knits Podcast on Instagram, you will already see a photo of the two very squishy skeins of juice box in the worsted weight, one in berry burst and one in pink mimosa I got. So I'm currently... So squishy. They're freaking gorgeous. So pretty. Super happy. So right now uh, the debate is going on between me and my mom as to what patterns I'm going to do with them. But definitely, like, hats, mittens, and scarf, and I'm going to combine all all the colors so it's, like, sort of a matched set. Okay. So we're currently debating on patterns and stuff, and I'm totally, mom's totally allowed to vote because she bought, bought the yarn, so I think that's only fair. So that came to me, so I jumped around for joy and was super excited. 
I was exhausted when I got home on Tuesday. It was quite late, and it was a long day. And mm-hmm. I come in, and I put my stuff down, and I take my take my makeup off, and I get all changed, and I come out, and I look at my mom, and I say, hi, mom, and I look at my dad and go, where's my yarn? <laughs> and my dad's like, well, I know what you love. And I'm like, thank you for the cheers. Yarn, please. <laughs> <laughs> so that was a thing. I was like a giant child. So that was fine. <laughs> and then Friday was my sister's wedding. So I was staying overnight at the hotel with the rest of the family. I got my own room. I did put my foot down about that because I am a teetotaler. By design and by choice, I'm not a drinker. I wanted to have a alcohol-free room to go back to. And there's no guarantee if you're staying with somebody that that's going to be the case for them as well. Mm-hmm. So I uh, stayed by myself in, in the hotel room, which was beautiful. But I took my knitting with me because I knew I would have downtime in the morning. Mm-hmm. So I was right. I got up on my usual time in the morning, and I had about an hour and a half to knit in the morning in my lovely hotel room in my super squishy comfy hotel bed, which I totally took advantage of, and I worked on my speckle and pop. Sounds glorious. It was a wonderful, and I listened to CBC television, and I just chilled till my grandma gave a call from her hotel room saying her and grandpa and my dad and my uh, Aunt Debbie were off for breakfast. And I uh, joined them for breakfast. That sounds that lovely. Puts time perspective. I was sitting down in a hotel, cafe, what restaurant, having breakfast at eight a.m. on a Saturday morning, and I'd been up for over an hour and a half. You're weird. <laughs> <laughs> my dad and my grandpa had also been up for over an hour and a half, and so oh, was my aunt Debbie. They're weird too. I come from a family of morning people. Blech. Blech. <laughs> Morning, people. <laughs> hey, it worked out really well. I had my first breakfast at 8 a.m. Then I went swimming with my mom and my niece at 9.30 to about 9, about 10 after, 10 to 20 after 9 till about 10.30. And then we were back to, they went back to their hotel room because my niece stayed with her grandparents. So uh, mom and stepdad Chris could get a break on their wedding night. They had a honeymoon night free of the kid. And uh, we showered and checked out, and then Mom and me and my niece sat down and had breakfast again. So technically, I had two breakfasts on Saturday. Okay. Second breakfast is an acceptable reason to get up early on a weekend. Mm-hmm. Then Isabella's papa, my father, took the three of us, and we're all readers, my grandmother, myself, and my grandmother, my mother, her grandmother, me, and her are all voracious readers, we went to the big chapters at Polo Park. Ooh. And Dad immediately lost all three of us. <laughs> I can bet. He's like, I turn around, and the three of you are gone. <laughs> I love it. He's like, you're not even on the same floor. You're not even in the same sections. Uh, Isabella found out where the teen section was. She was gone. Mm-hmm. She was just like, oh, teen books? Chapters person pointed out. She's like, thank you. And up she went. Mom went to the romance. And I went upstairs to Starbucks because I needed more coffee. And <laughs> uh, the second floor has the science fiction, fantasy, and manga and graphic novel section. Mm-hmm. So I'm almost exclusively on the second floor unless I'm bargain shopping or I'm looking for knitting books and stuff. Yeah. And it wasn't a knitting book expedition. It was, I wanted some new fantasy books. So I picked up a couple of new fantasy books and I found some manga stuff I want to take a look and get and probably order so I can order the full collections. And then it's done, and I don't have to reach the end of one book and not have the next one, which drives me nuts in manga. I don't know why it doesn't drive me nuts in fantasy. But it, dry, it doesn't, but it drives me bonkers in manga. So, but I did find out the book, one of the books I owned is called The Everything Box. Okay. That's the one where the angel is searching for the device in his pocket to finish off man after the flood, and he can't find it, and he looks up and says, Ah! Oh, and I don't want to say the second word because we're okay. age. Okay, yeah. Uh, and there's a sequel to it called The Wrong Dead Guy. Okay. Which looks just as hilarious. It's not the one I picked up, but it's on my list to get. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, so I'm super excited about that. But I did pick up a second in the series I'm reading, and I did pick up a first one from an, o- from an author I've never heard of before. But it involves drug-dealing orcs. Okay. Yeah. I like where this is going. Mind-bending elves. Okay. Um... Unhelpful mages. Okay. And humans being human. Okay, that sounds like a hot mess. I know! I'm so excited! 
in the front cover. And I'm really, I'm super bad for literally just looking at the cover. And if it's got a catchy line mm-hmm. or an interesting cover, I will buy the book. And the cover was uh, Live by the Law or Die by the Sword. So, like, I was sold before I even flipped the book over. And then I just read the short little forms where it was drug dealing orcs. And I just have it done. Oh, I don't yeah. even know what the rest of the book's about. I, you had me at drug dealing orcs. I know. I was just like, this is coming home. And I was like, how do we make the decision on this one? I'm like, live by the law or die by the sword. He's like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Makes perfect sense to me. <laughs> so uh, many monies later, mm-hmm. we all uh, had our books and we got back into my dad's Alberta size truck. And if you live in Canada, it is a, for those of you who know cars and trucks, my dad has a full cab, double door, full back. So it is big, a very fancy truck. Big freaking pickup truck. Yeah, I am five uh, ten, and I need to use the step to get into the truck. It's huge. <laughs> it's like a bus. It is a big, it's big a small vehicle. bus. Yeah, my dad is six two, and we sit in the front seat together, and we go hello, hello, because <laughs> there's a lot of room up there. <laughs> it's a fancy truck. Hey, he's one of the few drivers left in the family, so. He needed something that he could use for work sites and what he does, but could still sort of cart a family around in. Mm. Yeah, so he does that because it'll be several years before Isabella gets her driver's license. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, but that was good. And um, we came home and I turned around and left and I went to the Wolseley Wool anniversary sale. Oh, that doesn't sound dangerous. <laughs> Dad dropped me off. <laughs> he knew where I was going. <laughs> The only thing that stopped me coming with you when you texted me was the fact that I was still in my pajamas and I really didn't want to get out of them. You know what? Should have come with me. It was 20, 15% off most of the store yarns. There was three tables of not 15% off yarn and the uh, Barreau, or and the uh, Cascade 220 Superwash worsted was uh, half off. Can't. I don't have any warmer place to store yarn. I don't know where I'm going to store the yarn, but uh, many, many monies later... I came home with a sweater's quantity of a Cascade 220 Superwash, not in one color. I picked up five, one, two, three, four colors. Yeah, for the uh, So Faded Cardi by Andrea Mallory, mm. which is just starting to get really big. Yeah, oh, I saw that and I'm like, I need this sweater. But it only goes to 50.1. Four inches in a finished bust in the DK weight. Right. And I need more. Yeah. So rather than working on upsizing the pattern, because there's, there's, um, it's got a positive ease to it. Mm-hmm. I'm going to do the same dimensions in a worsted weight, which will get me that last little bit I need. Yeah. Because I'll be doing a slightly bigger needle. So I picked lovely. up, I picked up some yarn for that. I will post the pictures for it. Yes, I know they're bright jewel tone colors. Don't care. I'm going to enjoy it because it's they're varying me colors. They've got a cool undertone, so they'll go in great with my wardrobe. Uh, Cascade Superwash do not have colorways. So it's a green, a purple, a blue, and a, and a, and a chocolate brown as my four colors. It's going to be so pretty. Yeah, yeah. So I'm, I'm super excited. That is a present to myself for my birthday, so I'm probably going to start that in January, irregardless of everything else I start. <laughs> it doesn't, I don't care. You guys know me by now. I start 50 million things. It's fine. Yep. Uh, I had went there because they have the National Parks Collection Yarn, which is a limited edition yarn inspired from the National Parks in Canada. Which all looks super pretty. Gorgeous. If more of the skeins of yarn had less black in them to represent the rocks, I would have bought the entire collection. Wow. But too many of them had too much black in it for me to be able to knit. So it's just not a I would be I would be able to own it, but I wouldn't be able to make anything out of it. So that doesn't that doesn't make any sense. Yeah. So I picked up two skeins from one of the Ontario parks, which have a beautiful colorway to them. They're in a fingering weight, but with those two fingering weight skeins, I'm thinking whatever we pick for the podcast anniversary knit along, that's what I'm making it out of. Mm. Which Essentially means I'm making a shawl, but that shouldn't shock anybody. <laughs> <laughs> what? You making a shawl? Crazy talk. So, that's what I'm thinking for that, but I really wanted to get my hands on some of the lighter colored skeins, so I was able to track down two matching skeins 
for it, so I was super excited. Uh, which one in Ontario, I don't remember, but by the time this has gone up, I should have posted the picture on, on Instagram on the podcast. So I'll make sure it's posted and linked up there, so that way you can find it. But they are just, they are gorgeous, gorgeous fingering weight yarn. Beautiful, beautiful colorways. I'm so happy I was able to get my hands on some, because I know it's a limited edition, so that I don't feel bad about. And then... You guys didn't think that was enough. Oh and a goodness. sweater quantity of yarn for me is like 11 skeins of yarn at 220 yards. Like, I need... That's a lot of yarn. 2,000 plus yards to make a sweater because of my height. What else did you get? I was walking past the Ancient Arts yarn table. Oh. That's dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> and a white and green colored skein of yarn caught my eye. Uh-huh. So I picked it up. Uh-huh. And the colorway sold me on it. It's the colorway, get off my lawn. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, you guys, this had to come home with me. That's a great color name. Isn't it amazing? And they did, they hit the different shades of grass. So it's mostly white, but it's, it speckles into the green and into the brown turf colors. And it just n- nails it like I showed it to my now brother-in-law. Uh, and he was like, this is so, so, I was like, and you're going to love the name. He's like, okay, what's the name? He flips it over. He's like, oh, this is the perfect name. Like, <laughs> get off my lawn. And I paired it in traditional Jocelyn style, not with a color people would think I'd pair it with, but I took that white, green, brown skein, and I paired it with the fire, no, hearth side skein, also from Ancient Arts Yarn. And those two skeins go together beautifully. They've got a nice sharp contrast but they got a nice flow to them as well, so that's going to have to be a shawl. I'm going to have to figure out what shawl. It's in their, it's in their sock NATO yarn. Mm. So, like, I could do socks. I could do other things, but I'm thinking shawl. Shawl. Thinking shawl. You need more shawls. I don't have enough. No. You never have enough. No. No, no. such thing. Uh-uh. Completely impossible. I need yeah. more shawls. Exactly. So, I think that's what I'm going to do with those. And again, those are in a fingering weight as well, so... Uh, <clears throat> just shy two hundred dollars Canadian later. Oh my goodness! Just the left. <laughs> oh my goodness! Cause oh my god, you guys yarn. <laughs> so oh there you go. Goodness. Live vicariously through me. Uh, if you have not checked out uh, Midnight Cravings or Ancient Art Yarns or uh, Googled the National Park Yarn Collection way, I'll have to find out who did the dyeing job for that. Um, you guys should. They just oh Midnight Cravings. Their yarn is so pretty. My mom had troubles picking. And I said, well, she's local to Saskatoon. And my mom's like, well, (laughs) we're going to have to keep track of where she goes Mm -hmm. so we can buy more. Apparently my Christmas present has already been bought. Ah. But they were at a craft sale. So I don't know if they bought more yarn for my Christmas present or if they bought me something else for my Christmas present. Could be anything at a craft sale. wait. Uh, That is how presents work. I know, but that's fine. (laughs) I don't mind. Apparently I'm the easiest person to buy for in the world. Everybody gets it done early and tells me they're done with me early because I'm easy to buy for and then doesn't tell me. Meanies! The whole lot of you. <laughs> I won't tell you when I buy your present then. Oh, I told you that I bought yours. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Meanie. <laughs> you were like the first one on my list I got done. I was not expecting to run across it. So, hey, it was a complete fluke. Complete fluke. But that's my yarn on the go. Lots of me talking. Lots of me shopping. It's time for fiber flubs. <laughs> I gotta take a break. Ah, <sighs> so I decided it was a good idea to try starting a new project while watching Fairy Tale. It's an anime. You can find it on Netflix. And YouTube. And YouTube. You're welcome. It's a terrible, stupid anime, and apparently it was sufficiently distracting that uh, learning a new skill while doing it was a terrible, terrible idea. <laughs> So I was attempting to learn how to do a tubular cast-on. Okay. Which, after three tries, I finally got right. Okay, good. Well, at least you got it right in the end. So that's lovely. Okay. But by this time, I'm, like, two or three episodes of Fairy Tale in, and I've, like, got two rows of tubular cast-on, like, okay, finally. So I finish my one-by-one ribbing, Mm -hmm. and then I decide it's a great idea to start reading this chart. You see where this is going. 
And which pattern is this for? The Bloomsbury mitts. Oh dear. Yeah, that's it's got all sorts of like twisted stitches that look like cables and stuff. Oh, cool. It's a pattern of mitts and pearls and twisted stitches. Yes. No actual cables. Okay. I'm beginning to think the actual cables might have been easier. It might have been. <laughs> So I was plugging away on the first row of the chart, and I got to the end of the chart. I still had two stitches left. <gasps> Uh-oh. So I don't know if I somehow cast on too many stitches after all of that nonsense, or I've just misread my chart by two stitches. Oh, no. I was, uh, I was just counting when, I did a break, when we took a break a minute ago, and it seems like I have the right number of stitches, so I think maybe I just read the chart wrong. Maybe? So I'm going to have to tink back the row, count my stitches again, and figure it out. Oh my gosh. Because if I've got the count wrong, I'm just going to rip back my three rows and do it again. Well, you know, somebody needs to do production or uh, progress. What is it we've said for me from knitting? Uh, I would say, uh... Oh, uh, process. Process? Process. Knitter. One of the two of us has to be a process knitter, because it's not me right now. Yeah, it seems to be me. Okay. I, uh, I spent a good, like, two hours knitting yesterday, and I have, like, four rows to show for it. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah. Oh, dear. Oof. On the plus side, I really definitely know how to do tubular cast on now in two different ways. You know what? That's not actually that bad of a thing. No, and it's worsted weight, so it's it's pretty fast. That, yeah, it won't be too hard for you to make some progress and stuff once you got it under wraps. So, well, hopefully it's just a stitch count error. And when you tink back, you're able to figure out what went kind of sideways in the chart and do it up. Yeah. Sweet. Is that it? Is that all? That's my flub. That is... Wow, that's got to be frustrating. <laughs> I'm looking at it going, grr, grr, snort. Grr, snort. Grr, snort. Oh my goodness. There's a snort in there. I am angry at it. It's in timeout. It is. It's staring at me. It's mocking me. It's mocking you. Well, you didn't put it in the corner. That's why. It was in the corner. I brought it out here so I'd remember to talk about it. Also okay. because I'm actually really proud of how the tubular cast on came out, so I'm going to show it to you after. Absolutely. I look forward to looking at it. <sighs> but I do like how the yarn is knitting up in this way. Oh, it's good. completely different because it's not color pooling at all. Oh, um, nice. So it's doing more of a like, little stripey speckly effect, which I like a lot better. Oh, wow. Yeah, no, that would be so pretty. It's got a lot of yellow in it, and I, I don't like yellow that much. But when it's surrounded by dark green and blue and light gray, it, it really tones blue. down the yellow. Okay. So I'm liking this a lot better. So I, I think well, I'll really exciting. like it as mitts. Woohoo! I'm just gonna have to fight it that's to get it into the mitt what? shape. I had to do the same thing with some of the stuff I've knit. It's still totally worth it in the end. I know. Mm hmm. It's like I wanted to knit. The mm -hmm. boneyard shawl? Yeah. 14 times I had to start that shawl. Oh my goodness. Still not done that shawl. I've had to put it aside to work on other things. Still. I look forward to picking up and knitting it again, because it's just, it's a very enjoyable knit. It's a Stephen West pattern. It's a free Stephen West pattern. Mm. Mm. I'm going to have to link to that now that you've talked about it. You're welcome. All the links, folks! <sighs> <laughs> Alright, well let's move on before we get off topic again. Okay. Uh, spinning yarns. That's me! You did some spinning. Uh, I was teaching my mother to spin. That's exciting. Well, she was looking at my, um, because I uh, spin on a spindle. She pulled it out and she looked at it and she's like, what? So she made me sit down and show her. So I sat down and showed her. And then I had her doing it for a little bit. It was oh. just the park and draft method. I mean, it's nothing complicated. And she just quite enjoyed just sitting there, spinning. She didn't do it for very long. And she doesn't think she'd really do it terribly often because the wool, we had to get up and wash her hands right away afterwards because of the wool allergy and stuff. Mm, but yeah. she, uh, she quite enjoyed that. I said, well, I'll take a look at learning the differences for spinning cotton because it's definitely a different... Yeah, because it's, shorter it's fibers. Because it's a shorter fiber. But I said we would take a look at like the Pima Cottons, which are longer and uh, the shorter and fibers. silk, maybe? Yeah, and silk, and see what that would involve and how much skill it would take. Mom said that would be good, because she, she could see herself spinning. But we just have to find a way to make it approachable to her. And she wouldn't do anything more than the than on the spindle. But she said she'd yeah. pick that up every once in a while and work on it. Didn't make her arthritis in her hands hurt or anything, so... 
Oh, that would be nice. Mm -hmm. She would so. make pretty artsy skeins. She would. And I would knit with them if she made me. I would put them on display, but that's just me. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, so I did, I mean, not much. I mean, it was only like 15 minutes or so, but I did do some spinning this week. So it counts. I did some theoretic spinning in my head. Sure. Because I've had a lot of downtime at work. So I was reading knitting blogs. Why not? And there was this blog on how to make slubby yarn. So that's that thick, thin yarn. Okay, yeah. Um, and so it was talking about going from like a bulky slow, like a bulky down to like an almost lace weight mm -hmm. and how you do that on with an electric spinning wheel or I guess any spinning wheel. Yeah. Um, and then I'm like, this sounds like fun. That storm in the castle uh, roving oh. that I got from Hillary's Magical Yarn... Orium. Yarn Orium. I'm never sure if it's Yarn Orium or Yarn Emporium, no matter how many times I say it. Well, I always hear you say Yarn Orium, so It is Yarn Orium. Yeah, okay. I know it's Yarn Orium. Okay. Um, yeah, but I think that storm in the castle would make really good uh, slubby. Thing. Yeah, slubby, yeah. yeah. Oh, that'd be really pretty. And then just knit it into a giant shawl scarf thing yeah no that would be so and that would showcase that fiber color so well mm -hmm. absolutely is that that tonal gray with just the little bits of green and yellow yeah and brown yeah no i think that would pop really nicely oh that'd be so good so i'm i'm really excited about doing that i just haven't had time <laughs> and now apparently you're running away with my spinning wheel so only for a couple of days <laughs> i know i wasn't gonna use it anyway <laughs> you know i'm gonna be using it anyway and i think yeah. i'll see if i like it <sighs> All right, so that's spinning. That's spinning. You done? Ta-da! It's time to discuss all the stuff that we're doing or going to do. Yes, right. I may have been listening to show tunes this weekend. I'm sorry. <laughs> You're not sorry. Oh, sorry. Sorry, not sorry. I dropped my bag of eyeballs on the floor the other day, and they were just exploded everywhere. <laughs> chocolate eyeballs. I can't have the American kind, but she found uh, a store that sold them from the British kind, Ooh. and the British kind are corn free. So she brought me home a bag of chocolate eyeballs. So I, of course, wasn't paying attention, grabbed the bag of chocolate eyeballs, and the, it was open because she'd been stealing some, which mm -hmm. is fine. She paid for them. And then I dropped the bag, and then chocolate eyeballs all over the floor. <laughs> so I, of course, tweeted at Ben, I dropped my bag of eyeballs, and they're all over the floor now. <laughs> <laughs> Whoopsies. <laughs> I was really confused about the eyeball tweets up mm -hmm. until you sent me the Snapchat with the picture of the eyeball candy and like, yep. ah, okay. Yeah. That yep. makes way more sense. Yeah, but out of context, it just sounds Out of context, so good. something about British eyeballs, eyeballs? all over the floor? Mm -hmm. What? Yep. <laughs> I have absolutely no idea what you're talking about. Which means I did the no context tweet perfectly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, well, what are we going to be doing later this year? What am I doing now? What am I working on? <laughs> Quick, tell me my plans. <laughs> uh, currently, you're doing the Speckle and Pop West Knits Mystery Shawl Knit Along. You betcha Clue 3 went live on Friday. And I was busy dancing with Mr. B. And he white man dances like nobody else. It's amazing. I Did anybody get video of that? No, we were too busy laughing and having fun and dancing. Aww. You'll see it at your wedding next year. It's fine. I don't want to wait a whole year. Well, take him to a wedding. I don't know what else to tell you. <laughs> Can I just, like, turn on the music? Will he just start dancing? He might. Okay. Well, tell me what music to turn on next time he's over, and because I want to see this dancing. It's entirely possible. I believe he said the trick is to have a sense of rhythm and not give two farts. Yeah, that's about it, yeah. Yeah, I said, well, that's the best type of dancing, period. So, yeah, yeah. I'm with having a sense of rhythm and not giving two farts, which is kind of how I dance. So it works for me. Pretty much, yeah. Yep. The instant I, I stop giving any farts about what I look like dancing is when people start going, wow, you're really good. Yeah, well, that's how it Just works. Just right. Yeah, that's exactly how it works. Anyway, uh, C4 is coming up. I know. Oh my god, it's around the corner. It's like two weeks away or less. Yes, Central Canada Comic Con is October 27th to 29th. That's mm -hmm. only a couple weekends away. Mm -hmm. I'm just about done my costume. I gotta get yours going and under the way. Uh, I need to have my sewing room back, and that should have happened sometime this afternoon, this evening. My father promised me he would not leave it in a mess. Oh, that's good. Yeah, because I believe I uh, came home Saturday after my yarn shopping and came downstairs and came around the corner and said, Daddy. <laughs> <laughs> You cannot leave it that way when you go. And he said, no, I can't leave your sewing room that way. I'm like, no, because you'll have one very 
very mad daughter if you do. He's like, how mad? I'm like, oh, I will I will make sure there are no peanuts and no potato chips in this house next time you come to visit. Ted's like, you Ooh. wouldn't. I'm like, oh, I would. Ooh, the gloves came off. <laughs> He's like, I will not leave it in that mess. <laughs> like, you better believe you're not leaving all of your construction stuff all over my sewing room. I just finished cleaning that bloody space. You will <laughs> clean it up before you go. <laughs> I just have to finish Wonder Woman shawl, so it's all fine. <sighs> I have a Wonder Woman shawl. I've got two costumes. I've got the speckle and pop. I've got... <laughs> uh, you like your deadlines. I love deadlines. I, I, you know, don't take the grown the wrong way. I seriously love being this stressed. I love having this much that has to be done right now. I just... It probably explains why I did a double major in university. I really do thrive on that sort of environment, so... I'm right where I need to be. I'm really bad at self-imposed deadlines. Oh, I love deadlines. But again, I'm weird. <laughs> uh, oh, said costumes are for the Pride and Prejudice Ball on October 28th. They are. I gotta go order me some fancy gloves. Actually, what I'm gonna check out is, um, because we have a Royal Manitoba Ballet Theatre Company, mm. uh, they have a open for the public um, dancing store where they sell the tights and the costumes and stuff. I'm going to see if them or the theater uh, outfitters have gloves that'll be long enough to cover the tattoo in my elbow okay. that'll go to the size that I need them to go to. All right. Yeah. I was probably just going to wander down to, like, Claire's or something. I, I have uh, what we were going to uh, call well-developed forearms. <laughs> I carried 50... 50 pound bags of grain for over two years. Yeah. Yeah, and I manhandled, and it was manhandling, 300 kilograms worth of liquid malt in a container. Yeah, that's not something I can do. No. I am uh, not dainty by any stretch of the imagination, nor would I want to be, because when I have to carry home a 20 pound bag of salt, it doesn't weigh nothing. Yeah. Nice. I also throw my niece around in swimming pools and generally function as a jungle gym for smaller people, so upper body strength time. is is helpful. Yeah, so fancy dancing with costumes. Mm hmm Which we were learning today. Regency era dancing. English country dancing. We did a lot of hand holding and spinning folks. Yep. I got very dizzy, bounced off many folks. Yep. It was wonderfully fun. So fun. I look forward to our last lesson next week. Four of six dances are learnt. Two more to go. I'm so excited. Oh, so pumped. We're so excited that we might take up dan this reg we might take up this dancing regularly on Wednesdays. I'm thinking it might it might need to be a thing. Like if we have just as much fun on the last Sunday and then kind of feel sad that the lessons are over, I think that's gonna tell us that yeah, we yeah. need to do the Wednesday thing. We can maybe drag our our uh, partners. Not on Wednesday. Mr. B does uh, D and D on Wednesdays. Ah. But we can take yours. Okay. And now uh, I'll be Kayla's partner. We'll take her. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, Kayla was saying how she needed to take up a hobby. Done. I found one for her. Excellent. She can come be uh, the male to my female. Okay. Because that won't be weird at all. Not she at fits all. under my shoulder. <laughs> I think maybe you want to be the man in that relationship. I suspect I will be the guy, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I'm taller than she is. By several inches. Oh, yes. Y'all. Yeah. Uh, back to events. Absolutely. Uh, the Grinch Along, December 1st. It starts on the 1st of December. That's... We stop knitting for Christmas this year. This is uh, an effort by the Knit More Girls. It is. Uh, I participated last year. I loved it. I am looking forward to it this year. It made Christmas so stress-free for me. So stress-free for me. It wasn't even... I was, it was a walk in the park. You can knit on stuff for Christmas next year. You can knit on anything else you want. Just not for Christmas this year. You want to spend all of December knitting yourself Christmas tree ornaments because you can? Do it. Why not? I like it. Mm -hmm. Stress-free knitting. Uh, and then in 2018, we are planning the year of the sock. Oof. Which is your idea. Yes, it's my brainchild because one year of crazy is not enough for me. Another year there must be. December 31st, 2017, I stopped knitting in Granny Square a day, and I feel like there's going to be a void in my life. 
So for 2018, it's going to be the year of the sock, and I'm going to teach myself to knit socks. So every month, the goal is to knit a pair of socks. Now for the first few months, my goal is going to be to knit a pair of socks. To learn how to knit socks. Try different toes, try different heels, and just figure out what I enjoy. If you've never knitted a sock before, dudes, let's jump in, let's do this. You are not alone. <laughs> <laughs> I too will also learn to knit socks. If you've knitted socks, if you've knitted socks for years and you're saying, Jocelyn, you're crazy. Sock knitting's nothing. Well, then learn a new style of sock. If you've never done shorties, do shorties. If you've never done knee highs, do knee highs. If you've never knit lace socks, do lace socks. Or fair isle socks. Ooh, there are many things to do in the sock knitting world. So knit it's all the about house socks that never leave because they're too thick to put in boots, but dang, do they feel comfy on your feet in the middle of January. Mm. It's all about the knitting. And we're going to knit socks every month. There will be prizes at the end of the year, obviously. Mm -hmm. And you will get an entry for every month you have a completed pair of socks. Toe up, toe down, two at a time, one at a time. One sock you randomly started four years ago that you haven't finished the partner to, don't care. <laughs> as long as you're finished at the end of the month, you get an entry. Awesome. Yeah. You want to triple, quadruple, enter 15 other billion contests at the same time, do it. In fact, link them so I can find them and I can see what other people are knitting in socks. Because nothing says time spending like Jocelyn wasting time on Ravelry. <laughs> it's my favorite place at 2 in the morning when I can't sleep. And at 6 in the morning when I'm listening to the radio. And 3 o'clock in the afternoon. I'm sensing a pattern here. Um, Jocelyn likes looking at stuff. Uh, I know Des Desert Vista Dye Works has programs. I know the Grocery Girls have Sock Talk. The Grocery... Uh, grocery Girls. The Netmore Girls do Operation Sock Drawer. Like, I could keep going. There are a ton of great groups, contests, and stuff out there for sock knitting. And being a part of a community and sharing and doing stuff is really sort of the goal of knitting. So I think we should band together and uh, make ourselves some sacks. All the socks. All the socks. I'm super pumped to have 12 new pairs of socks. I think so. For you, for other people. I mean, I will obviously vote, always vote to uh, knit socks for yourself, but I'm a selfish human being that way. Conveniently, two of the other people I would knit socks for have feet that are about the same size as mine. Oh, perfect. So if I decide I don't need 12 pairs of socks, I can give some away. Absolutely. Who doesn't need 12 more pairs of socks? Everybody needs 12 more pairs of hand-knit socks. Mm -hmm. My goal is to be able, in December, to be able to knit knee highs, if I so desire. That's, That's my goal, goal for the end of the year, to be comfortable enough knitting socks so that it doesn't scare the bejeebus out of me, the concept <laughs> of knitting knee-high socks. I'm going to try magic loop, I'm going to do circulars, I'm going to I'm going to give all of them a go and see which ones I like the best. Ooh, and you'll have to try down. to get a hold of some of those uh, sock rocket needles. I think so. Like, I really want to give it a good heave-ho and give it a concentrated effort to learn and try and explore and, and not just sort of fall into the, I like this, so I'm going to do this all the time. Not that there's anything wrong with that. No. No. I also but learning learn, new stuff. Learning new stuff. Always. So uh, I definitely put sock blockers on my Christmas wish list this year. <laughs> and I'm waiting for my mom to go, what are those? <laughs> Foot shapes. Foot shapes for my knitting, mommy. <laughs> <laughs> Who asked? I'm not telling you. Okay. <laughs> my uh, brother-in-law's just learned to Google things I've requested. <laughs> so ah. Google's got a good idea of what you're looking for. I'm like, Google knows. Google's pretty smart. <laughs> smart. Mm-hmm. I know the other thing we're going to start in January... Our podcast anniversary knit along, or I suppose crochet along, make along, make along. Let's call it a make along. It's a make along. Knit okay, it, crochet it, sew it, I suppose. Sure, spin it. Yeah, yep. Um, we're going to uh, pick a couple of designers. I'll pick a crocheting designer and a knitting designer, or a uh, designer that does both, or a designer that does both if I get lucky. Uh, for the sewing ones, it'll just be whatever you want that you think you can justify as a podcast anniversary. Yeah, yeah. No, absolutely do it up. Uh, we'll open those threads. Uh, I will actually make sure that the designer we've decided with for the knitting and the crocheting, or for both, is posted by the 1st of December. This will give absolutely everybody a month to pick a pattern that they like and to get the yarn that they want. 
without having to be like, oh my god, I gotta do it like this week. No, 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 no. Take a whole month. There is no reason to stress this. We're gonna start it in January. I'm going to technically close it in March, and then whenever Diana's done, uh, will be the official close date. <laughs> Yeah, sounds about right. Yeah, yeah. I'll uh, just blow you all away and finish whatever it is in two weeks. Then I might. <laughs> I don't see you doing it. I'll pick a pair of baby booties. That's <laughs> cheating. <laughs> Aww. We don't get prizes, obviously, but it's <laughs> to uh, help celebrate the closing out of our very first full year of podcasting. So, will there be prizes? Of course there will be prizes. Can you enter more than once? Of course you can enter more than once. You want to make... A pair of socks every month from one designer plus a shawl and have four entries? Go for it. Do it up. Absolutely. You want to quilt a blanket? Yeah, do it. I don't think there should be any sort of restrictions on that front whatsoever. I'll make sure I'll post things uh, for examples and stuff if you want to sort of stray from the, uh, the norm and you want some sort of justification for it. Like our favorite colors. Purple. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, purple. If it's in purple, I'll probably give you an entry. Uh, <laughs> I needed this amazing purple yarn. Here's an entry. Where'd you get the yarn? <laughs> I might need some of that. Uh, it's it's going to be very loose. It's going to be very friendly. If you're new, great. If you're experienced, cool. The point is just to help us celebrate our first full year of podcasting and get into the spirit for our birthday match, which also happens to be March. Yep. So, uh, I will have mine done in March because it'll be my for myself birthday present. And my birthday comes first. I mean, yours is a day later, <laughs> so it's not like you have that much time between it. <laughs> Got a whole extra 24 hours, what are you talking about? A whole extra 24 hours. Uh, and I'll you can do it a lot in 24 hours. Yeah, I'll be celebrating 35 years on the planet. Celebrating 27. Ooh, you're almost 30. Yeah. Got a few years away from 30. Whatever. I've enjoyed 30. Seems alright. 30s have been amazing for me. I'm looking forward to seeing what the next decade brings. So, that's what we're going to be doing at the start of the year, plus whatever else I find to join. <laughs> and nobody can see the goofy grin on my face, but it's there. I believe you. Oh, man. Guys. I can't help myself. As it was, I was looking at more knit alongs the other day. I'm like, I do not have time. No, Stop no, you really don't. Stop looking. You do not have time. Ugh. Such a rubber arm when it comes to these things. <laughs> to wait for ones in, like, December at least. I really think I need to not do any knit-alongs till I've got some other stuff done that I've wanted to get finished. Maybe So I suspect too, yeah. maybe a summer knit-along next year. Yeah. I think that's probably actually feasible. And then we'll go from there and I'll start the crazy up again in the fall. Sounds like a plan. Yeah. Well, my whole goal, my hope is you'll go away for your honeymoon, and you'll come back, and I'll have, like, a bazillion things done for Stash Dash over the course of the summer, and do, like, 15K or something crazy. Ugh. <laughs> hey, if I do that coat, and I'm working on the sleeves in the summer, mm. the whole coat counts. My goodness. Mm-hmm. I want to do a blanket for my own bed next year. <laughs> I was thinking about finishing things. Uh, Have I, I finished stuff? Finished anything except that one pair of socks back in the spring? Nope. Since we started this podcast? Nope. Ooh. Yep. We're gonna have to have a party when I finish something. <laughs> I, it'll be a cake night or muffins or something. Donuts. We'll get artisanal donuts <gasps> to celebrate Ooh. your first finished item. <laughs> Well, second finish Since item. Since the socks. Or, yeah, socks, yeah. Yeah, because I've done... Ooh, Hannah. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven shawls. <laughs> I'm feeling so inferior right now. Oh my gosh. <laughs> and I finished my fifth and final Christmas hat. Which I've been doing on the down low because they're Christmas presents for you guys. Yeah. So all I really have left is a shawl for my mom for Christmas, a cat sweater for my mom's cat for Christmas, <laughs> and then I'm into my grandma's birthday present and my uh, uh, 
uh, niece's fingering weight sweater, and then uh, my uh, mom's birthday present is what I've already got planned for next year. But my mom's birthday's in August, so like I got time. I'm doing her a starting point shawl anyway, because she almost walked away with mine and told she couldn't have it. And then we'd go buy yarn and then make her her own. <laughs> Which I haven't quite finished. I've got the last section to finish, and I had to put it down because I haven't had time, so I'm thinking I'll just leave that for Stash Dash. Yeah? Yep. Yep, yep. Already planning, folks. Already planning. <laughs> but I think that's it for events. Yes, and some diversions. Woohoo! Well, it's one of those days. I was the man today. Mm -hmm. I was a real man! Oh my god, guys. <laughs> If you watched Fairy Tale, you don't get the quote, but oh my gosh, Elfman. <laughs> oh, Jocelyn likes anime. I'm sorry. I had fun striking a hero pose and proclaiming that I was a real man today. Why not? I think I almost killed a couple other people from laughing. <laughs> <laughs> so we were having fun, and that was the point. Done. Shall we talk about our book for the week? Yes. What book are we reviewing this week? Like, I don't know. <laughs> She's ruining the segue. <laughs> This week we're reviewing Monster Knits for Little Monsters, 20 super cute animal themed hat mitten and booty sets to knit by Nuria Kige. Kige. I don't know how to say this, I'm so sorry. K H E G A Y. I'm so sorry. I don't know how to say the last name. Anyway, as it says. Now I'm so excited you read the title of the book and the author off. Oh, right. Uh, it retails for twenty two ninety nine in the U.S. and twenty six fifty in Canada. And this is a book out of my collection that I bought at a book sale probably about a year ago. Okay. That's fair. It's got a very cute picture of a uh, alien elf on the front. Yeah. Now, if you're into baby nets, totally up your alley. Uh, Jocelyn is very not interested in baby nets. Neither am I, but but little, 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 little baby elf. It's fair. Alien thing. But, I mean, most of my friends have had children, so there's just sort of like the few stragglers who are younger than me, but you, a bulk of your friends are in the right age for, for children and marriage and stuff, so you're just getting geared up, so it makes sense. Yeah, no, a lot of my friends are uh, getting married, and even fewer of them are having kids. Yeah, so. you're right in the right frame for it, so... Not so much. I've got a couple of friends who are pregnant and having kids, but not really a lot of youngsters in my life anymore. Most of them, huh, I have friends with junior high students. Oh my goodness. As children, because they've been having children since shortly after high school. So, I guess. Yeah, yeah. It, it, yeah. Hey, I'm 20 years outside of high school shortly. That's my a niece weird will be in, my, my niece will be in junior high very shortly. She's grade six this year. Yeah? Yeah. Weird. You know. Weird. You're not that old. You can't possibly be that old. I'm that old. Weird. Having said that, I love being an aunt. I don't plan on being a parent, so the baby knitting's kind of hit and miss with me. Uh, I do knit some things, though. I tend to go for, like, quilted blankets and stuff for car seat covers, because I'm a fan of the practical. Practical is good. But I am a cute. fan of taking the opportunity when they're too small to protest to put stupid hats on them. That's totally fair. I'm <laughs> thinking of a girlfriend who's due in December. Might have to ask her if I can I could knit one of these for her baby. She might tell me no. She might tell me yes. I will ask. I love this little baby on the corner of the cover in the shark hat. He just looks like he's glaring daggers at whoever put the hat on him just off camera. The children do not look overly impressed in a lot of these photos. They just look confused yeah, in a lot of like, them. What's going on? But they're what adorable. Is on my head? They're so the cute. Are, the hats are pretty cute. They're so cute. All right. Shall we dive into the patterns we liked? Yes. Put the big disclaimer on. There are still some patterns in here I would knit. Mm -hmm. I don't have this overwhelming... I didn't heart anything. There isn't anything I feel like I need to knit right now. This instant must go on my needles. But there were some patterns I liked. I mean, mine are, uh, once we get to the, uh, Huggable Horror section. Oh. I had one in the first little, uh, animal section. Sure. The fluffy bunny with the little flower. Ah, uh, the bunny one. 
When I was little, um, I had a, this large collection of rabbit toys, like plushy rabbit toys. Like, Were they anywhere as big as the rabbit that Red just adopted? No, no. I mean, like like my special animal when I was little was... Was a bunny? Was a bunny. Okay, that's fair. It was a little bunny in a pink dress. Okay, mine was a uh, grumpy time Care Bear. <laughs> so I, I have a special place for uh, bunny baby stuff. Ah, that's fair. So... So freaking cute. Little flower. Okay, sorry, I'll stop squeaking now. It's okay. Uh, unsurprisingly, the first pattern that I thought I would knit for a little person was the alien elf. That is the second thing I wrote down. Because alien elf in the huggable horror section. Get I love that a lot of, the, almost all the patterns come with mittens and some of them come with booties. Mm-hmm. Which are, And yes. some of them with scarves. Some of them with scarves. They are freaking adorable if you knit baby stuff super cute look uh i just thought the alien elf looked just ridiculous enough i would do it because of those long pointy ears on either side of the little bonnet hat it's totally a yoda hat it is definitely a yoda hat like if you want to if you want your little baby to cosplay something this is a yoda hat <sighs> no what we need to know is somebody who's just learning how to walk so i can put him in a chicken costume why a chicken costume? Just imagine a toddler in a chicken costume. Okay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a mean, mean old person. Oh, gosh. Just, it needs to happen. Uh, the other thing I liked in that section was the uh, miniature robot. Yes. So much yes. So much The yes. little antenna. The little antenna. The little boopy antenna on that top. Was, that was what did it for me. Yeah, it was the boopy antenna on the top. I was I was all over that. And like, the matching mittens. The mittens are cute. They look totally impractical because they also have a little boopy antenna on yes. top. They are super super They're completely it would, useless. It would go and on, they're so cute. It would go on for a photo and then they would never be used again because mama gets so irritated with the things and I wouldn't be able to blame mom. Oh, uh, that's it. That's that's all they need to but last for. For all factor in baby showers. So cute. So cute. So freaking cute. All right. Uh, in the adorable animal section. Mm-hmm. I'm not gonna lie. I liked the cute shark. <laughs> the shark's pretty great. Uh, mostly because the kid just just does not having it. I think this is my favorite picture in the oh, entire book. Because you the just kid is just just whoever's off camera is. That's it. They're dead. Yes. And I think that's what makes the shark in my mind. It's just the kid is like, I go eat you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the kid sells it for me. That and the big eyeballs. Yeah. Yeah. Some good eyeballs on yep. that shark. Yep. The expression on that kid. <laughs> yeah, the expression on the kid's the best. However, of all the ones we've looked at so far, it's the funky frog I would actually knit. I really like the furry fox. <gasps> you know, I'm not a huge fox fan. Like, the fox knitting craze hasn't really caught me. It's Don't at me. I understand. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's not so much that it's a fox. It's more like the whole set is so cute all together. Okay. Because there's the hat, and there's a scarf, and there's mittens, and they all have little ears and faces and noses. Do you know what I think they'd be better at? Not at a toddler size, but when you reach, uh, say, to T's age. Mm. So yeah. about five-ish? Yeah, about five-ish. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, that'd be all right. I, I would, I would, that I would do. Not for like a wee wee person, so. A little human being, not a baby. A miniature human. I was always telling my niece she's a mini human. <laughs> I don't know, she's pretty cute, close to a full human at this point. She's a size 8 lady shoe, ladies and gents, and she's 10. Only a size 9. Yeah. I'm a size 11. Kids can be so tall. <laughs> nope. <laughs> she's slowed down in eating, which means at least she's stopped growing for the next little bit. <laughs> we can take a bit of a breather. So we figure sometime around January she'll put on another three or four inches. She's up to my shoulder. She's, almost... she's so tall. Tell she's... me to stop that. She's a tall, skinny creature, that one. Yep. However, yeah. Anyway. Funky frog. Funky frog. Very that, cute little frog. That I would actually knit and give to a, give to a mom. I like the little embroidered mouth. I like the eyeballs on top of the head. The eyeballs are also pretty great. That's what does it for me. It's the eyeballs, guys. 
How they'd, they'd wiggle with the little toddler running around? Yep. That's exactly <laughs> what my thought was. My thigh balls are going to be mobile. <laughs> it's going... Same with you. Small toddler just walking in the chicken costume. Because then you get that waddle. <laughs> walking in the chicken... Oh, my gosh. I am such a mean human being. Oh, I'm right there with you. Oh, my gosh. Okay. You absolutely need to do all of these horrible things to them before they're too old oh, to know any better. Yes. Because when they're 16, you pull it back out and embarrass the snot out of them. Yeah. And it's great. Yeah. I can't wait till my niece is a teenager and I can embarrass her. <laughs> oh, it's going to be so good. All right. Now, we have the festive friend section. The snowman? Absolutely the snowman. Is the... So the snowman hat uh, has, like, earmuffs, but the muff part is giant pom-poms. I know! That are, like, half the size of the kid's head. It makes no sense! But my brain's like, nope. Nope, I think, um... I think, uh... Little stubby carrot nose. The youngest niece you and I share might... might need... <gasps> she yeah. might need a snowman hat. She might need a snowman hat. Yeah. Yeah. I like the way you think. See, I like the way I think too, but it also involves embarrassing small children. So, you're, you're <laughs> for fine. my amusement and joy, so I'm not <laughs> sure everybody else agrees with me. Okay. Alright, I have one more thing that I liked. Okay, what is your one more thing? I liked the dearest reindeer. Oh, I didn't even catch the pun when I was reading that before. Oh, I did. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, I super did. <laughs> I'm not, I don't think I like the eyes on this one. I'd probably just leave the eyes off. I would leave the eyes off, but I would definitely do the reindeer horns. And the little nose. And the little nose. Yep. The little Rudolph nose. Yep. 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 Okay. Yep. Yep. That nose just, it, it needs to be booped. Mm-hmm. So that was, that was it for me for ones that are, it's like, even though, even that I would be like, I'm not really like, I would knit any of them, but if the opportunity arose and I knew mom would appreciate it, then yeah, they would be on my list of things I would go back and look at. But overall, it's a cute little book. It's I, just the photography in this book. I just like looking at the pictures of the cute little... The kids look so cheesed off half the time. I know, it's great. It's just like, what in the world I like world torturing you small humans with knitwear. on my head. <laughs> oh. I yeah, love this getting those disgusted perverse looks. Set of, perverse set of stuff. It's the same <laughs> when you put cats in clothing. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, I told my mom she has to send a picture of her cat when she puts the sweater on it, because I need to see exactly how pissed off Mr. Smokey's going to be. <laughs> and I am putting a boy cat in a pink sweater. Don't care. Awesome. Cat's colorblind. You cat doesn't sense. care. No, it's going to be pink and, uh, my, it's going to be, uh, baby pink and chocolate brown tweed. Nice. It's going to be a very stylish cat. <laughs> <laughs> Whether he knows it or not. <laughs> Uh, but that's it for the review. I say, oh, overall, I say if you knit baby stuff, absolutely take a look at it. If you're not interested in baby knits, then why bother? I mean, it wouldn't be for you. But if it is something that you're interested in, yeah, no, I think it's it's well done. They've got techniques. They've got basic knitting in the back. Yeah, there's a super solid technique section in the back. So yeah. if you don't know how to knit, you can uh, learn mm-hmm. how to knit. You can learn how to knit or sort of expand out. Like, all you've ever done is the basic, basic, basics. And you want to start learning advanced beginner. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. It's got some uh, crochet in there, some stuff about care and finishing Mm -hmm. and cabling. Excuse me. (laughs) It's okay. So, no, I think overall, a well-done book. I'm glad it's in your collection, because I would never own something like that, but that's okay. They're so cute. I believe you, and I do, because there are some very cute cats in in those, uh, in hats in there. I don't feel the need to have my own small human running around, but... I can admire other people's small humans. Oh, I love being an ant. <laughs> best ant and an auntie, best job I've ever had. Seems like the seems like the way to go. Mm-hmm. Get all the good stuff, none of the bad stuff. Well, you get some of the bad stuff, but that's okay. You occasionally you don't have to deal with the diapers ever. It's great. If you're a good ant, you do. Uh, okay, I'm, I'm a mediocre ant then. I did full on duty. I did diapers. I did bottles. I helped out when she had her first round of flu. I helped. I'm, uh, I'm only mediocre then. Yeah, I will. I'm okay uh, with this. I did the tantrum tantrums. I did the studying at university when she was running a temperature and homesick with a cold at like four, where she's curled up on me under blankets, melting to death, trying to read my textbooks. The volume of textbooks that kid has fallen asleep to in the course of her lifetime is astonishing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've I've done all that because that's what you do. 
All right. Good to think. But that's it for us for the week. We've we've managed another week's worth of knitting. Again. A crazy. I know. Oh, Diana, why don't you tell everybody where they can find us? You can find us on Ravelry, Instagram, Facebook, and Pinterest as Northern Knits Podcast. Our blog with all our show notes is at northernknitspodcast.com. You can also email us at northernknitspodcast at gmail.com. Jocelyn, where can you be found on the internet? I am cohesively found on the internet as Amber Dragon. Most active on Ravelry. That's not a shock. Uh, <laughs> once you find me in one place, it's pretty easy to find me everywhere else. It's always a picture of my face. It's true. It's always a picture of my face. I'm pretty good at that avatar being the picture of my face. Is everything linked cohesively? Heavens mm. no. Ish. I got, it's uh, getting better. I got lectured by one of my girlfriends at my sister's wedding, so apparently we're fixing that in early November, because she's had enough. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> I understand my instructions. Come over, bring stuff, link things. Got it. Mm-hmm. Where can you be found on the internet? I can be found on Instagram and Twitch as Firewater and Fiber, and I'm on Ravelry as Woolrat, that is Wool hyphen Rat. Uh, I'm on Twitter as Artemis underscore 134, and I have another channel at twitch.tv slash Artemis in Leetspeak, which is linked in the show notes. Absolutely. And that's it. That's all. That's us for the week. It is. Yay! Thanks for joining us. We'll be back next week. With much more knitting. We creep ever and ever closer to the busy Christmas season. Dun, dun, dun! Dun! When I start driving Diana really nuts by making sure she podcasts in and around all the family stuff. Which means, yes, if we have to, we will be podcasting in Mr. B's bedroom while everyone's getting ready for Christmas. If that is what we have to do to make it work, that is how it will happen. Then you can open your Christmas presents. <laughs> all right, then. We will not fall off schedule. I believe you. I am very serious about this. I believe you. If I have to knit and do podcasting through Halloween month... <laughs> We will be staying on track for Christmas month. <laughs> okay. It's a thing. All right. I don't sleep right now. When's it November? I'm so tired and we haven't made it to Halloween yet. <laughs> <sighs> it's like exam period all over again. I had Christmas music at the pub last night. Why not? It's too early. We haven't had Halloween Christ- yet. We did Christmas stuff up at Dollaramas. It's too early. Halloween has and to happen Walmart. first. It's too freaking early. <laughs> It gets earlier every year. It's crazy. I don't do Christmas music personally till after Veterans Day. I don't, I don't do it up till after Remembrance Day because I don't feel that it's appropriate. Mm-hmm. I feel it's very much a sub to to the veterans for Remembrance Day. After Remembrance Day, oh yeah, it's on my it's on my iPod all the time, or it's on my phone all the time off Google iTunes, Google Tunes, Google what, Google Play, Google Play. <sighs> Guys, it's late for Jocelyn. It's been a long week. <laughs> So, and then I absolutely listen to my Christmas playlist until Christmas, because I have an amazing curated Christmas list. If you have a song you think I need to add to my Christmas list, please send it to me. You have to also remember that for fun, when I was doing my degree, I took a class in the history of Christmas, and me and my girlfriend Emma listened to Christmas music from September through exams and then into the holiday season. Oh my goodness. And we didn't get sick of Christmas music. That's impressive. <laughs> well, my capacity for memorizing Christmas lyrics has increased somewhat since then. <laughs> All right. It's well, a thing. And oh. on that note. Until next week, I'm Jocelyn. I'm Diana. Saying no matter where your week takes you, don't, don't forget, forget to knit. knit.